Davis Younts is a former active duty Air Force JAG and attorney. He focuses his practice on military law, criminal defense, and religious freedom. He is the primary attorney for Stand With Warriors and has been heavily involved in the battle against tyrannical vaccine mandates and woke culture in the military. Please welcome Davis Younts. But, I mean, to be controversial, I'll be controversial because of my faith. Listen, part of this is a foundational sin problem that the military is not addressing. In the military, a, a, a conservative Orthodox Catholic chaplain or a conservative Orthodox Protestant chaplain, they're not welcome anymore. I mean, chaplains are discouraged from praying in Jesus' name. And so we have a moral problem in our military that has not changed, but we're not even addressing the sin problem anymore. And our policies in the military are drifting away from any sort of moral truth, moral foundation into relativism, into hedonism, into humanism, all of those things. So that's controversial to say, but what would we expect? What would we expect if we're not acknowledging sin as sin? There's no biblical foundation. If there's no core truth anymore, what do we expect is going to happen on our military? Well, good afternoon. My name is Davis, and as you heard, my background is active duty Air Force. I had the privilege of serving for 11 years on active duty. I continue to serve in the Air Force Reserve as a lieutenant colonel. And I'm here speaking to you for a few minutes on behalf of an organization called Stand With Warriors. And what I want to do for these next few minutes is I just want to share the story, a testimony of what can happen when Christians come together unexpectedly and the impact we can make. So as we do that this afternoon, I want to tell you that what God has laid on my heart is this, that for each of us, a call is coming. For each of us, a phone is going to ring. A trumpet is going to sound. And God is going to call each of us to take a stand as a warrior in his kingdom. There's going to be a moment for each of us when we're going to be called to be the watchman on the wall, sounding the alarm. When we're going to be called to put on the armor of God and stand in the gap. When we're going to be called to pick up a sword and join the battle. And so my challenge for you this afternoon is, will you be willing? Will you be ready? Now we know as Christians that in the beginning, God created those he foreknew, he predestined. We know that. We know it's God who chooses us, God who calls us, God who saves us. But far too often today, we are distracted by sin, by the comfort of the world around us, and we forget that each one of us has a predestined role to play in God's kingdom. He chose each of us to be warriors. I mean, praise God, he chose each of us from the beginning of time to have a role in expanding his kingdom and in his eternal victory. So the question is, will you be willing? Will you be ready? Well, for me, the call came on a Tuesday night at 1145 at night in September of 2021. It was a phone call from an attorney, a guy named Bradley Pierce, who I'd met only once at a homeschool conference. And when he called me, he said, Davis, I know your military background. I have a group of Navy SEALs who are being threatened with court-martial and possibly imprisonment. They don't know what to do. How can we help them? And from that phone call at 11.45 on a Tuesday night, a group of men came together from all over the United States to stand with Navy SEALs. And it was the commitment of those Navy SEALs willing to stand up, willing to sacrifice their careers and potentially their very freedom that a movement was started. So here's what happened. This phone call came and I was willing, I was ready. And three days later, we were in a room together, dozens of Navy SEALs and their families. Pastor Jeff Durbin, Pastor Luke Pearson, Zach Lautenschlager, an attorney named Bradley Pierce, I'd never met any of these men before. These Navy SEALs had very little interaction with them. But what happened is that day through prayer and through the commitment that was made to use this moment in time to share the gospel and, ex and expand God's kingdom, we developed a plan to push back, to push back legally, to push back politically, to push back in the media. So from a Friday morning, by 
a night God ordained that we would be on the Tucker Carlson show. And from there we moved to CBS, ABC, OAN, Newsmax, Apologia Radio, even Cross Politic. God gave us this incredible platform to push back and have an impact. So the military went from the threat of court-martial imprisonment to Congress acting and helping a little bit, a little bit, to move it so the worst case scenario wasn't court martial anymore. The worst case scenario was you're kicked out with no benefits, but it was a start. And what happened is I went as a military officer and as an attorney from being alone, from feeling isolated and alone in this fight, from being alone on my hands and knees, praying before God what to do for my family and for our future financial st stability, to having a team of Navy SEALs, pastors, and other men around us and we picked up the sword and we began to challenge the mandate in the military. And what happened was it went from a few military members feeling isolated and alone and fighting back and pushing back against this tyranny to over 200,000 military members today, almost 13% of the military, who has said no to this vaccine mandate. We went from no hope and no help to a situation where federal courts have uniquely in American history issued injunctions because of the Department of Defense clear violation of the Constitution and the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Because of that, we have injunctions that protect anyone who filed a religious accommodation request in the military, in the Navy, in the Air Force, in the Marine Corps. Now the fight is still on for the Army, the fight is still on for the Coast Guard, and there are others we're constantly fighting for who didn't submit a religious accommodation on time or a woke chaplain said, hey, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna say your religious faith is sincere. So we're still fighting that fight every day. But here's what I will share with you. Navy SEALs, men with careers that matter to them, pastors from across the United States came together and what, from what a year ago was just an idea, just a concept, became Stand With Warriors and has had an incredible impact and given us the opportunity to share the gospel on nationwide platforms and brought people together. And I'll submit to you, if, if it's what God is calling us to do, those that are committed to this aren't going to stop with the vaccine mandate. We're going to continue to fight the woke encroachment in our military. We're gonna to continue to push back against the military using taxpayer funds and military dollars to pay for transgender surgeries. Millions of dollars for transgender surgeries. Last week, the Secretary of Defense said, we're gonna use military money, money that should be going to train our military members to pay to people out of state for elective abortions. So that battle is not over. We will continue this fight because what happens in our military is so important to freedom across our country. See, our military officers like me, the Navy SEALs you heard from earlier, we take an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And it begins there, and we don't give up our religious freedom, our constitutional rights by joining the military, but we can be on the front lines. And I pray that through this movement and through all of you, when you're willing to take a stand, we can make a difference. So my call to you is this. If you are a Christian, you need to understand that part of your Christian walk, part of your faith journey, is that God is gonna call you for a moment. There will be a phone call that comes from you, for you. And I ask you this, are you willing? Will you be willing when that phone call came? I praise God that I was willing to answer that call. It's why I'm here today. It's why I met some of the great men that are here, the people that are here. I was willing to answer that call. I was willing to sacrifice my career and my future st stability. God put me in a position where my family was willing to do that. So I ask you, will you be willing when that call comes? And that, the next thing I'll ask you is, if you're willing, if you're willing to make that choice, then you will be ready. You will begin doing things every day. Eliminate sin in your life, build your physical strength, build your spiritual sp strength, put a moat around your family, and build a community. Come to conferences like this, right? And build a community of people that can come together to make a difference for God's kingdom. Because here's the truth. The truth is this. If you're a Christian, your sovereign king, the king of the universe, has already given you an order. Your king has made a call to go into all the world and make disciples. The only question for us is will we answer it? Thank you.